What's up? It's your guitar instructor, Miles, and today you're going to learn about some advanced arpeggios for guitar, and you can find a link to the tabs for this lesson in the description below. You'll also find a link to my Facebook group, the Guitar Techniques Society, and of course, if you like lessons like this about arpeggios, techniques, guitar licks, and more, then subscribe to the channel. All right, so let's dive right into these licks. And the first lick we're going to learn is a single string diminished arpeggio lick that sounds like this. Okay, and the way that you're going to play that lick is you're going to play 18 of high E with your pinky finger, pull off to 12 with your index finger, and then with your middle and pinky fingers, hammer on to 15 and 18, and then you're going to pull off to 15 and 12. So pick, pull off, hammer, hammer, pull off, pull off. And that's, again, uh, at frets 12, 15, and 18 of high E. And it's important to remember frets 12, 15, and 18 because we're going to move from a diminished arpeggio to a minor arpeggio, which will go from 12, 15, and 18 to 12, 15, and 19. All right, so you're also going to be using that exact same finger pattern, which will be pinky, index, middle, pinky, middle, index. That six note shape. One, two, three, four, five, six. So for the minor arpeggio, you're going to play 19, 12, 15, 19, 15, 12. So we have our diminished arpeggio, our minor arpeggio, and now we're going to play a major arpeggio. And to play the major arpeggio, you're going to have to sharpen your third. So we go from a minor third to a major third, and we play 12, 16, and 19 of the high E string using the same fingers. And we're going to go 19, pull off to 12, hammer on to 16, hammer on to 19, pull off to 16, pull off to 12. All right, and that gives you your major arpeggio. All right, so diminish, minor, major. And last but not least, you're going to learn the fourth type of triad, which is the augmented triad arpeggio. And for that, just like major, you're going to have a root and a major third, but instead of a fifth, you're going to have a sharpened fifth, which gives you frets 12, 16, and 20. And so you're going to play 20, 12, 16, 20, 16, 12. So all together, uh, for the diminished arpeggio, you have frets 12, 15, and 18. For the minor arpeggio, you use frets 12, 15, and 19. For the major arpeggio, you use frets 12, 16, and 19. And for the augmented arpeggio, you use frets 12, 16, and 20. Okay, and once again, you're going to use fingers pinky, index, middle, pinky, middle, index. All right, so I feel like I've covered those enough, and let's move on to our next set of arpeggios. And what you're going to play are, a, it's going to be a series of seventh arpeggios. We're going to go major seven, dominant seven, minor seven, minor seven flat five, and then fully diminished, which is diminished seven. And we're going to do this at our eighth fret of the low E string, and this is using our root note C. So we're gonna start with the C major seven arpeggio, and we're doing what I call a two one two shape, because you play two notes on one string, one note on the next string, and two notes on the next string. All right, so we're starting with the C major seven arpeggio, and we're gonna be using groups of eight notes. Okay, and you can call this like the Stranger Things arpeggio, because, well, it's, it is the Stranger Things arpeggio. So what we're going to do is we're going to play 8 and 12 of low E. And then we're going to play 10 of A. And then 9 and 10 of the D string. And then 9 of D, 8 of A, and 12 of E. And I use index, pinky, middle, index, or, sorry, index, pinky, middle, index, middle, index, middle, pinky. So there's our C major 7 arpeggio. Then we're going to play a C7 arpeggio, or C dominant 7th arpeggio. And that's just like the C major 7 arpeggio we just played, but you're going to flatten that 7th. So you're going to play 8 and 12, 10 of A, 
then 8 and 10 of the D string, then 8 of D, 10 of A, and 12 of the low E. And then you're going to move on to the minor arpeggio, C minor, and for that, we're going to flatten this third, which is at your 12th fret of the low E string, and play 8 and 11. So you go 8, 11 on E, 10 of the A string, and then 6, sorry, 8 and 10 of the D string. Then 8 of D, 10 of A, and 11 of low E. So, so far, we have C major 7 arpeggio, the C dominant 7th arpeggio, and the C minor 7th arpeggio. And next, we're going to have C minor 7 flat 5. So, to give you, uh, to help you understand that, the minor 7th arpeggio is constructed from a root, flat 3rd, 5th, flat 7th, and octave. So, with a minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio, you just take this 5th, which is at your 10th fret of the A string, and flatten it. Hence the name uh, minor 7 flat 5. So you'll get 8 and 11. You'll play frets 8 and 11 of low E. Then you'll play fret 9 of A. And then frets 8 and 10 of D. And then pull off or pick the 8th fret D. Pick 9 of A. Pick 11 of E. And that gives you your 8 note sequence. Okay. And then our 5th arpeggio shape is the diminished arpeggio shape. Okay, and it's like a minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio, except for you have what's called double flat 7. You could also look at it as the 6th interval. So that's going to give you frets 8 and 11 of the low E, fret 9 of A, and then frets 7 and 10 of the D string. I actually find that easiest to play with your index and pinky fingers, and then ring on fret 9, and then index and pinky fingers on frets 7 and 10 of the D string. Okay, and that's your diminished 7th arpeggio, also called a fully diminished arpeggio. So all together, our arpeggios are the major 7 arpeggio, the dominant 7th arpeggio, the minor 7 arpeggio, the minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio, and the fully diminished arpeggio, the diminished 7th arpeggio. And then, back to our original arpeggio shapes, uh, what we played in the beginning were diminished arpeggios, then a minor arpeggio, then a major arpeggio, and then an augmented arpeggio. All right, I remember that you can transpose all of these arpeggios, which means you can move them to any new root note that you want. And then from there, you just have to continue to maintain the same interval structure, the same finger structure, and you'll be off to the races. So thanks so much for watching. And if you like this video, then hit the like button. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching and have a good day.